Welcome to Hochoka Podcast. What defines us is our place in the environment that we live in and how we express ourselves in it. Join us as visiting artist Michelle David Meckling discusses this and more. Hello, Mataki Api, and welcome to Hochoka, here at the center of St. Joseph's Indian School's campus. I'm Scott Wooster, today's Hochoka host. We're talking with artist Michelle David Meckling. She is visiting first through fourth grade art classes at St. Joseph's Indian School. The visit was made possible in part through the South Dakota Arts Council Artists in Schools and Communities, a residency program for K through 12 schools and community organizations with matching funds from the South Dakota Arts Council. So, Michelle, great to have you at Hochoka today. Thank you, Scott. Thanks for having me on. Absolutely. So I'm just getting to know you a little bit today. And, and the first question I'm going to, you've been here the last couple of days at the school interacting yes. with our students, and it's great to have you here. Thank you. Um, I'm curious what motivates you to uh, share the art that you make with, with our students and with any students that you work with. Um, I think it comes from um, wanting to share the knowledge with young people that I've gathered over the years and uh, hoping that they can use materials, uh, art materials in particular, to um, express themselves. Because I think that's really important for the students to be able to do that in of all ages mm -hmm. and wherever we're at especially um, in the schools where um, it often isn't available for students to have an art program. So to be able to come and share my knowledge of art and uh, materials used in it, it's a pleasure. Yeah, it's a good way to give back to the kids, I, I would think. And, and a lot Absolutely. of schools don't have those programs anymore, correct? Our programs are being cut, some of those kinds of things? Yes, our programs are being cut all over uh, the state of South Dakota and across the nation, unfortunately, um, for various reasons. But um, where I live, uh, the art program for elementary school has been non-existent for 16 years. Wow. We just finally got our first elementary art teacher there um, and everyone is very excited about it. But she's shared between two schools, so mm -hmm. she has to travel in between the schools, and some of her work is on a cart wow. between the classrooms because there's not enough room. Right. And so we're fortunate here at St. Joe's to be able to have an art program. Is it um, unique coming to a school like this, <clears throat> uh, to St. Joseph's Indian School? Is there something, a different way that you approach it? Yes, it's a little unique in that it's a private school, and um, the public schools sometimes, uh, if they haven't had an art program, uh, you won't come into a rich, um, richly stocked, fully stocked art room mm -hmm. that has so many beautiful supplies mm -hmm. and things. Um, so sometimes that is a challenge mm -hmm. when I walk into a, a school. But, you know, you make do. You can make art with a piece of paper and a pencil. Yeah. Um, you don't need a lot of fancy equipment. Um, but just to share um, the elements of art and the principle of design with the kids, um, like I say, you can do it with a brush and some paint. That's extra, right. but you can do it through drawing and, and um, lessons like that, too. Yeah. So um, I, tell us a little bit about how you came, first of all, to be an artist, mm -hmm. and then second of all, to be an educator. You know, what were some of the influences in your, in your life and in your, uh, that brought you to this work? Well, um, I, I guess I would say that um, one of the first inklings of knowing I wanted to be an artist was when I was in the first grade, mm -hmm. and our art teacher allowed us to do a finger painting. And I did a painting of a parakeet, and it was green, and it was big, and it had texture and movement. And I just thought, this is it. 
this is the best thing I've ever made. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to be an artist when I grow up. And I never let that go. Yeah, you knew. Okay. And so what, what, how, did it, uh, how did it form from there? So um, through school, uh, it was always my favorite subject. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, the talent started to come out, and uh, my parents recognized that. I was grateful. Mm -hmm. um, but I grew up in uh, Sioux City, Iowa. Mm -hmm. And uh, we were um, Lebanese Americans mm -hmm. and grew up in an Orthodox church um, that had Byzantine paintings everywhere. Everywhere you looked, there was a Byzantine painting. And um, the colors and the textures of that, too, was what I stared at yeah. when I was in church right. growing up. Just the wonderment. How did they get that on the walls and the ceilings? I mean, it's everywhere. Mm -hmm. And so I really wanted to do that. I wanted to paint a mural. I wanted to learn how to do it. And so going through um, schooling and finally reaching high school, my art teacher, uh, Mr. Jim Goff, he was a professional watercolorist. And so... It was funny that he didn't do a whole lot of hands-on teaching of art. We just watched him do his professional watercolor, landscape watercoloring in the classroom. And um, so I learned how to, um, he showed us techniques like how to do washes and how to do um, distance, middle ground, foreground, and um, that was what really started to get me interested in landscapes. And his landscapes were everything that was around us on the plains, the river, trees, um, you know, not a whole lot of figurative work, but he did do some figurative work, but mostly the environment around us and how to capture that with water water. Uh, colors. Mm -hmm. And so that's where I really got interested in landscape painting. Yep. And you have, uh, I, it makes me reflect a little bit on your, the quote that I, I would have mentioned as I introduced this segment of the podcast about the environment. And it, how did, can you unpack that, that quote for us? Right. I, I feel like we are products of our environment. Mm -hmm correct, mm -hmm. either positive or negative. Right. Um, but I, I grew up in a very positive uh, surrounding and uh, in a beautiful setting right on the river with uh, my father was a, had a boat and we went boating. Mm -hmm. And so some of the landscapes that I saw during that time were gorgeous. And now I actually live in Vermilion mm -hmm. on the river valley and mm -hmm. I can see for miles mm -hmm. and it, um, it's very panoramic. Um, so, so that's what I paint. I see and, and it's a huge subject for my artwork is that it's what I see every day. Mm -hmm. Like I said, I'm, we're products of our environment and so I see a lot of things as a landscape whether it be um, uh, with buildings and um, uh, like a cityscape or mm -hmm. an ur urban scape or um, the plains or mountains or water. Um, those are the things that I see first, yep. the way it lays on the land. Yep. And so then you you basically get art in, right, and art out. So you bring it, you take that in and, and then you uh, bring it out in your medium, which I think is... Uh, For sure. Yeah. So you... You were obviously impacted by your your high school art teacher, but did you have any idea at that time that you might want to go into teaching art or or giving back in the way that you do with schools now? Or did you go to college to be an art teacher? Or what did you plan to do with your art from that impact? Yeah, good question. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I um, I did not plan on being an art. Ed educator at, yep. after I graduated from college. I thought about it, 
but I did not get um, all of the credentials that I needed to do that mm-hmm. with because I was ready to move on and travel and go see things and do things um, that were not including a second degree mm-hmm. at that time. Um, And I met my husband, and we got married and traveled around and uh, had a wonderful time um, until um, ending up back into uh, Vermilion, where um, there was an art camp through the um, Vermilion Area Arts Council Mm -hmm. that I helped teach at and then later led several years and uh, there is where I really realized how much I enjoyed teaching art to the kids and that was pivotal for me yeah Um, and then uh, like I said some school districts do not have an art program Mm -hmm. and ours didn't at the time but there's a lot of time in between this. Mm-hmm. Um, but I knew I wanted to help out, and so I was with a group of parents um, who went into the schools, and we were volunteers, and we called it the Jolly Art Block. And we went in, and each of us learned an element of art uh, that we would go into the first grade, second grade, third grade, and teach. Um, lessons throughout the term so they could get some art and we did that for 16 years wow wow yeah and I knew I wanted to but I was volunteering yeah and and it it strikes me that you didn't do it because you knew at an early age you wanted to be an educator or a teacher you did it because there was a need out of necessity because you were passionate and there was a need to do that yes so you you now have your own gallery in Vermilion, a shared gallery or your own gallery? Or? Well, it's interesting that you would mention that. Okay. Um, after my husband and I settled in Vermilion, um, I opened a coffee shop and an art gallery. Okay. And it was yeah. called the Coffee Shop Art Gallery. And so we uh, served coffees, sandwiches, teas, soups, salads, mm-hmm. and that's for sure, a full-time job. Right, absolutely. And in between that time, I had two children Mm -hmm. as well. Mm -hmm. And so when they got to be school age and got them into the elementary school system, there was no art. And that was um, unacceptable. So you became a teacher out of necessity, and then you you must have got involved a little bit with traveling a little further, which brings you here to St. Joe's, and this isn't your first time at St. Joe's. You've been here once before? This is my third time. Third time, time. okay. Gratefully, I love it here. Yeah. Um, In 2016, I decided that I do want to travel. I do want to share my knowledge of materials um, with uh, young students, and I also do it with seniors as well. Okay. Um, so, and that opportunity was given to me by the South Dakota Arts Council. Yep. In allowing me to be on the roster of artists, and so I get requests to go to different school districts or communities. Sometimes, um, you know, senior centers, nursing homes, and bring art to them so that they can uh, find a way to express themselves and nurture um, growth and yeah. acceptance of of what we have uh, in our environment. Yeah. yeah. How to express that. That's great. And so they set you up with the, the trip here in the first place. You came to St. Joe's um, and, and knowing kind of what we were about here at St. Joe's, uh, and go ahead. Well, the first time, no, I didn't okay. know because yeah. St. Joe's was my first residency. It was the first yes. one. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Yes. And then um, I got to be teamed up with another artist, Wade Patton, okay. um, who is 
um, a South Dakota born um, native and he uh, had just come from Boston um, and was done with the city mm-hmm. and had just come here and we got to team team up and teach. I had already chosen printmaking. Okay. Um, but Dave requested me the previous art teacher. Sure, Dave Meyer. Yeah. Dave Meyer. Mm-hmm. I said, well, what would you like me to do, Dave? And he said, let's do printmaking. I said, all right, we'll okay. do it. Okay. So that's how it first all got started. Any great experiences that you've had with our kids here or any stories that, that you would want to share? When I work with young uh, students, especially here at St. Joseph's, they have a story to tell. Mm-hmm. And sure. subject matter is not usually an issue. Yeah. They can huh. come up with um, content more easily than some of the children in a, um, a public school. or Not to say that they don't have content to talk about. Right. But, um, the children at St. Joseph have a lot to talk about. Yeah, that's great to hear. So we, you and I, um, you referred to this off camera. Uh, we, we were going to talk about one student in particular that you had a story with um, who was here before, and he, he touched you in a, in a special way with something that he did. Do you care to tell that story? Um, well, I can tell that story um, and it happens over and over again Mm. in many classrooms honestly sometimes the teacher will tell me before the class comes into the room um, there's a couple of children who may cause a little Mm -hmm. trouble um, so be careful of them and I always think ah Okay, they're probably just super creative, mm-hmm. and and that is the case a yeah. lot of times right. is um, they just are trying to express themselves. Right. And sometimes when they get the art materials in their hands, they just quiet right down mm-hmm. and get into it. And, um, you know, maybe that's their calling. Right. Maybe, maybe they're going to be following, pursuing art in some career or way right uh, so that's really a rewarding to see a child calm down when they have art materials in their hands yeah so and to be able to I, I like what you said especially you you you're able to reframe that when they come into school it's not it's not a uh, necessarily a troubled kid or the kid that that will cause problems in the classroom it's the kid that that if I can channel what this guy's doing through art, we could make a difference here. It could be a, a pretty neat thing. Absolutely, and I think if they are more confident in being able to use the materials, like um, maybe it isn't through a pencil and paper. Mm-hmm. Um, some of the artists that cr- create the best things, or the or, you know things that like sculptors mm-hmm. or um, a ceramicist, they might not ever draw at all, mm-hmm. but their their material is the clay or, you know, or the, or the stone mm-hmm. or the... Um, so find, having that um, background and knowledge when they're young, they'll go, oh, I remember I used that before. I've done that before. And then if it's nurtured and um, brought out again for them at some point, um, it could trigger something that that makes them get through a difficult time mm-hmm. and uh, create something that expresses what they need to have brought out. Yeah. Yep, and I'm sure that's the way art has impacted your life. Your art has impacted your life in that way. Absolutely. And Absolutely. I don't know where I'd be without being able to write or play music and and that kind of thing. And as I get older, I understand it better and better how necessary it is. But uh, but it's nice to plant these seeds with the kids and let them know that that 
that's a, a path they can choose. Absolutely, I agree. Michelle, it was great to meet you. It was great to meet you too, Scott. Thank okay. you for having me. Absolutely. Um, we, we liked having you in Hochoka today, and you're welcome to come back and see us sometime. I would love to come back. Awesome. Again. And to our guests, uh, thank you for joining us here at the Hochoka, at the center of St. Joseph's Indian Schools campus, where we talk about issues that are central to Native American education today. Until next time, stay centered. <laughs>